John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors, we lost our new Leopard 50 catamaran to fire. So we began our search for the perfect performance catamaran for sailing us around the world. After four decades of sailing experience, we are very clear about what we want. So join us as we explore new horizons, stretch the boundaries in yacht design and build the ultimate catamaran. Jump on board for this adventure and together, who knows what we can achieve. <laughs> Because life is better barefoot. So where are we? We are in Dubai Ooh. and this is a very exciting day because... Because we are on our way to Portofino's head office and we are about to sign away our life. <laughs> <laughs> sign away on a contract for a Portofino 52. <laughs> yeah, very exciting day, major decision, yes. obviously. Yes, much contemplation, much discussion, discussion, details. Uh, my goodness. Anyway, finally, we are taking the plunge and it is going to be official within half an hour. Also. Also. Anyway. We'd really like to share this this moment with you guys, so we better concentrate on the road because we're in Dubai and these drives are crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we are at Portofino Shipyard. Um, we're at the head office here and... About to sign the contract. Oh my goodness. It's, you spend all this time planning, planning, thinking about it. And when it comes to sign the contract for those sorts of amount of money, <laughs> uh, how are you feeling honey i'm feeling really excited i'm feeling a bit nervous um it's it's been a long journey and um, we're finally making a huge commitment right here today again. right now right here right now <laughs> again um a little bit of deja vu but anyway i'm ready to take the plunge let's do it it's let's, a different plunge it is a Portofino plunge. It is. Your new shirt. I'm in the Portofino family. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Your hair keeps on covering your So, Should we do this one? We have to celebrate and to celebrate an important event with an important champagne. So we have Dom Pignon. To celebrate and the signing yes. of the contract for the Portofino 52. Wow. <laughs> Doing it in style. Woohoo! The crowd goes wild. When the boat burnt, these guys reached out to us and said, we're getting a boat built. There's a new design company that has started in Dubai. He's been in the industry for many, many years, but he's building our boat. And you've got the same tick boxes as us. So I think we should do cheers to you guys. Hi guys, exciting night for us because we are having a meet up for the Barefoot Doctors sailing crew and we are in Dubai and we're at the Dubai Offshore Yacht Club. And one of the members, Lars Lind, he has organised all this for us and is hosting the event for us and we're 
so grateful because you know he's organized everything got the numbers got the got people to come in because it's actually a private club good on you Lars yeah but Lars also does wonderful stuff he organizes the rallies around Dubai and also to a man and also to the Maldives so this is a he's a phenomenal mover and shaker in terms of getting things happening for the offshore sailing community the actual true sailors so good on you Lars thanks very much so let's go inside So this is Lars, this is Mansour, it's Jason, Yvette, Jerome, Ray, Jessica, Sharon, Dix. Sailors are aspirational sailors. Yeah, well, that's good. And thank you very much for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cheers, well, everyone. Cheers. 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 On behalf cheers, of the Barefoot Cheers. Doctors, cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Like thank you all for coming. Cheers, Jopin. And we wish you good sailing wherever it happens to be. Even if that's only in your bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting, very exciting times. Stay posted because this year and the next year and the next ones are going to go off. Welcome to another session of What's Up, Doc? Okay, today we're talking about wounds and when you need to take antibiotics. Obviously, getting cuts and, and wounds on boats is very, very common. 
and sometimes they'll go red and sometimes get a bit painful and sometimes get a bit oozy but the question is when do you need to take antibiotics for them now i'm pres i'm trusting that everybody who's long-term cruising has a, a pack of antibiotics on board with them so that they don't have to go and see a doctor so then it comes down to your decision and your understanding about when you need to use them so you don't use them unnecessarily but equally you do use them when you need to and the infection doesn't get too bad so what are the signs of infection, Doc? So one of the first signs is uh, swelling. There's pain, there's redness, there's heat, and there's pus. pus. So these are the five things that you need to look for which indicate that a wound is getting infected. Now, if you think about it, if you hit your finger with a hammer, it's going to be red, it's going to be swollen, it's going to be painful. It might be a little bit hot to begin with, but there's certainly no pus. But you can see how simple trauma will also cause a lot of four out of those five things. But the thing with the wound is that over two or three days, the wound or the redness from the trauma should be settling down. But if infection is, in, is getting into that wound on day two, three, and four, that all those signs will be starting to increase. So that's what you're looking for, increasing signs of those five things Let's run through them again. Pain, swelling, redness, pus, and heat. You don't have all of them either. Sometimes you can have, like with the cellulitis, you can, there might be no pus, but everything else is there. And sometimes you can have pus and not a lot of pain. But you have to use your judgment. A wound that's getting worse means that you are getting closer to need to take antibiotics. I would also suggest before you use your antibiotics, in fact, when you have a wound, Use some vitamin C. I was just about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> use some vitamin C to save your antibiotics for more severe infections. Vitamin C kills both viruses and bacteria. And if you have a wound or if you have a cold, two grams three times a day or even three grams three times a day for a more severe infection may well save your antibiotics um, and get you better without needing to go to the antibiotics. So use that for two or three days. If your infection is getting worse, then take the antibiotics. You will know with the infection getting worse and worse all those signs will deteriorate and you certainly don't want to wait until if, if you've got a wound if it starts spreading up your arm get onto the antibiotics quickly because that's an in, that's a sign that that your body's losing the battle with the with the infection and um, the other actually good thing you can do is actually draw a line if you have a, a red mark around your wound get a pen a permanent marker or a biro mark it where it is today and put the date and then the next day you can draw another line and you can see is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller. If it's getting bigger and spreading up your arm, then you need to get onto the antibiotics. Great tip. And the other thing that you need to watch for is systemic symptoms. So if you have things through your whole body relating to this wound, then the infection isn't just there, it's going through your whole body. And what I mean by systemic symptoms is fever, sweating and aches and pains all over the body. If you're getting septicemic, those are the sort of things you're gonna be suffering as well. So if that happens, get onto the antibiotics earlier. What's the average time of, of a wound should heal? Okay, so, days? yeah, yeah. So if you have a, say a proper cut where there's a split skin, it should be dry in about three days, as in it should have formed a scab, and it should be completely healed in about a week. The redness from the trauma will usually last two or three days. So if the wound is infected, usually come on, as I said, usually about day three, but sometimes day two, but definitely day three, four, five. If you're getting more redness at that stage, that's infection. So guys, I hope that was useful for you all, and let's get back to the video. Hi everyone, given the huge amount of interest that there's been in the design features of the Portofino 52 uh, and the requests for fine details and technical information, I thought I would share with you the process of designing all these little features in the boat because it's actually a lot more complicated than you think. To get the polars we had to have finalised the hull shape and the details of the sails so that is now not flexible but everything inside is flexible so first of all we look at how the bulkheads are arranged in the boat you can see with all these metal frames and bulkheads this boat is 
despite being fast and should perform well, it's going to be exceptionally strong. So we're still having to make a decision as to whether we go with the lifting kitchen that comes out of this aft seat. But because it's going to weigh around 150 to 175 kilos, we'll probably not go with that option. However, one nice option that we've discussed was the possibility of having that sofa being reversible so you can sit on the sofa facing backwards when you're at anchor. And that is certainly something that Portofino could do. But in order to do this, we had to move the sofa slightly forward in the aft Cockpit. So when the lifting platform was down, you had somewhere to put your feet. Not a major issue, but it's these fine details that you have to be aware of in the design process. Another feature that we were really keen to have is a double day bed where Elizabeth and I could both lie together in the shade. The initial design was with the standard bench seat uh, underneath the steering station. So what we wanted was to change that into a double sofa bed. There were several design options we had for the steps leading up to the steering station, including floating steps. But because we wanted to have a back where these steps were placed, we really had to make the steps go up from adjacent to the saloon door. In order not to reduce the size of the steering station floor, the steps have to be relatively steep, pretty much like what the ladders are like leading up to the hatches of monohulls. Certainly in rough weather, we'd have to go down these steps in reverse, but you can see how it's important to work out the heights so that a six foot or six foot two man can get up into the steering station without bumping his head. There will be handrail added once the design is finalized. So having removed the steps, the designers then went about putting in the sofa design so that we could see what it looked like. There we go, a very nice end result. These drawings are just rough that we had in an online session, so don't get too particular about lines not being exactly confluent. Another unique feature that Raphael is aiming to design into the boat is that the engines in both from both sides can be removed using the boom with a pulley directly up and out of the boat and then the boom rotated laterally to be dropped onto a pontoon beside the boat. This is yet another unique feature. Hopefully we will never have to use it, but this would be a very useful feature if you had any serious engine trouble when you are away from major industrial places or out in the South Pacific. So now we'll move on to the guest hull designs and the en suites. And the initial design had the, had the VIP cabin on the port side with the engine underneath that bed, although it was completely sealed from the guest cabin with access from the engine room behind, this would reduce the access to the engine when you're doing maintenance and would just be a little bit more of a nuisance. So what was agreed was we would move the VIP cabin forward, give the engine room full height standing, and that's where we would also have all the other machinery and all the workspace. But that meant that the VIP cabin is pushed further forward. We had to lose ability to have a double ensuite. So the initial thought was just to have a single toilet and shower that were both shared with access from the corridor. But Elizabeth's strong feeling was on a boat of this caliber, each cabin really should have their own toilet. So the next option was to create a toilet for the forward cabin in the forepeak and sh have a shared shower in the middle. When the initial plans came back for this, it was the middle section was actually a shared shower and toilet with a private toilet at the front. We wanted to flip the toilet to be only accessible by the aft cabin, the shared shower to be accessible from the corridor. So this design had to be flipped over, but that in itself then caused problems because that would create problems with the space in the aft cabin where there was only going to be 309 centimeters of space between the wall and the bed. So what that meant was we had to move the whole bathroom area forward slightly and to do that we had to move the steps up into the saloon which then meant we had to change the design of the kitchen because the kitchen then had another length of space that had to be filled in. When you do what appears to be very simple things it often becomes a very complicated process with multiple flow-on effects in other areas. 
However, the flow-on effect was actually very good because it meant that the kitchen bench on that side was going to be increased to 2.5 meters, which is really enormous, which is very much like what you have in an apartment. So Elizabeth was very happy with this increased surface area to work on in her kitchen and the area in front of the steps was also aimed to be kitchen benches as well. Now I've had several comments on the channel about where is the steering station and how does it work. We've always planned for the steering station to be up the stairs in this sort of position but the details of that have not been finalized and still haven't been finalized. The principle that we want is that this steering station needs to be covered to protect us from weather and sun. We need to have access through that cabin top um, to see the sails so there is a plan to have a window in that section and we can create drop downs around that to keep the weather and rain and spray off us while we're sailing. Additionally, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have a hatch that we can pull across the whole area so the steering wheel will be below the top level of the roof so we can cover it all up in really bad weather or when we're away from the boat to keep all the rain and water out of the cockpit. So for now, we're working on a design for the steering station, the steering station cover. These are pre preliminary drawings and we can't really go any further until we have more detail about how the winches are going to be laid out and the deck hardware will work. So we are not going to finalize the steering station design until we know how the deck hardware will be laid out. Thank you very much for the trust. Thanks God to let me meet you and as a best friend and best customers. And I hope we have a long journey together for not one boat, many. Yeah, so say all of us. Yeah. So Let, let's hope that this is the first of the long series. Yeah, yeah. So And we are going to improve, 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 improve and make always better. So, watch this space because it's going to be awesome, an awesome journey. And we'll be very excited to see this boat on the water. Mm -hmm. And sailing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so look out. Stay tuned. Start building. Start okay. building. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go to work. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and if you like what we do, show us the love and hit the like button. Then hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on your regular fix. Then kick off your shoes and you can come barefoot with us.